This video is going to be on the stereo random flanger. Since I just went over the mechanics of flange in detail in the last four videos, I'm just going to do a sound design session with this one. So I have a blank instance of AL1 here. I'm I'm going to turn this into a um, like kind of like a brass um, pad sound. So I am going to turn up my sustain. I'm also going to turn up my release. Whoops. I'll just put this on linear. I'll turn up my release to 66. That ends up being the time of about a half note, I believe, at 170 BPM, which is what I'm going to work at because that's my favorite tempo. I'm going to use a single oscillator here, and I'm going to use a detune saw 2. What this does is it sums a saw up with a saw down. I'll turn up wave morph. Uh, well, first of all, just to show, I, I just have a blank sawtooth here with some release, obviously. So by turning up wave morph, I sum a saw up with a saw down. If I have the initial phase at zero for both, we're just going to get silence if we have no detuning. So I just press the key and we don't hear anything. If I give it detuning, we hear what sounds very similar to pulse width modulation. Um, if I put it at random phase, we don't. it's going to be that cycling, but I don't know where in the cycle it's going to necessarily start. Um, so I want to jump over to my common tab and I'm going to add some unison. I'll put it on three voices. Since I'm using three voices per note now, I don't want that eating up all of my um, uh, voice count. So I'll just regulate it to uh, 16, max number of 16 notes. Um, let's uh, add a little bit of detuning and hear what that sounds like. Now let's add some spread. Sounds nice. Uh, I think the oscillator sounds a little bit bright, so I'm going to take this edge parameter and take down some of the highs. Think of that as like a high shelf that's per oscillator. Let's uh, jump over to the, the filter and just use a four pole low pass. And that is uh, key tracked by default, sort of like how massive is. I'm going to bring down the frequency to something that sounds nice. So this is about an octave and a half above my uh, fundamental. Um, I'm going to put my resonance on high and my reso bass on full. All that these parameters are doing is making the response more similar to like a profit five. Um, let's put the resonance on like 20. Sure. Let's hear what a uh, filter sweep sounds like at this with these settings. So you can hear that the resonance is pretty gentle. It's not. It's not doing. It's not like. Uh, blasting the speakers or anything. So I want to modulate that cutoff point with VJS minus X, which is a special mod source that I'll talk about um, in detail in a, in a minute here. Uh, I'll modulate it by like four octaves. It's fine. And let's check out that uh, mod source. So I go to my vector control and I have this graph here. Now remember we're using VJS minus X. Um, I have a vector control a joystick on my synthesizer where I can move around this graph freely with that control. And if I go to the left, anything to the left of this center point counts, at, counts as VJS minus X. That is, the more I move uh, left of center, the stronger that modulation will be. And so it also uh, is patched into volume. So I could change this. Um, it says uh, EXI1 center volume. Uh, I could put this at like 25%. So that means uh, at this middle position, uh, if my vector joystick is there, which it is currently, um, we are only at 25% max volume. And if I move to the left, we would be at 100% max volume. If I move all the way to the right, of course, we'll be at zero volume. So I'm going to use the volume envelope as well as uh, using these other nodes um, as a modulation source. So I do that by putting vector envelope on. I'll turn key sync off. This is for the uh, for the volume only. I'm also going to turn loop repeat off. What that would do is it would loop between these parameters in a certain way designated by loop type. Um, so let me explain this. So I'm going to put zero in the middle. So remember in the middle, we're starting at, we're, we're at 25% volume and we're also at 0% modulation intensity. Um, at one, for one, I'm going to put that all the way to the left. Remember, vertically, it doesn't matter since we're only using VGS minus Y as a mod source. It also doesn't matter for volume either. Uh, only the X, X axis matters for volume um, in this case. Uh, let's put two at like 
Well, I wouldn't. Let's put two at like, um, like seventy percent. It's fine. Um, this is actually more like if I'm at seventy-five. Actually, I'll just put it there. That's um, for VGS minus X. That's actually fifty percent modulation intensity, um, and uh, we're at uh, I don't know whatever that volume would be according to this uh, uh, curve here. Um, let's put three all the way at negative one twenty-seven. And I'll leave four at zero. So zero is behind node four right now. And then it, if when I press a note, we'll be traveling to one and then two. And and this uh, traveling of, is affecting both the volume and cutoff position. Uh, I, I swear to God, this is a lot easier than it seems. Uh, but but yeah, I'm not going to put hold time on any of these nodes, which means when I press a note, it will simply run through. If hold time was there, it would like go to a node and then wait for like a certain note designation and then we go to the next one and then wait. So I don't have that. I'm just having it run to the next point in the process. So transition time is what I'm interested in. Uh, I'm going to use a 64th note to go from zero to one, which means the volume is going to fly up. And so is the cutoff point. As soon as I press a note for every other uh, position, I'm going to use a whole note. So it'll fly up at a rate of a 64th note, and then it will go down to node two at the rate of a whole note. Um, uh, yep, uh, that's it for this. Let me, uh, let's hear what it sounds like. So it sounds pretty brassy, and I'll move my mouse like uh, where the nodes are going. So it's going. You can hear it swell in volume there. Kind of doing a bad job of tracing with my mouse. One more time. There we go. Uh, now we finally get to talk about the random flanger. So let's go to our insert effects. We're going to route to insert effect one. And for insert effect one, I'm going to choose number 49, which is my stereo random flanger. Um, it's nice that it is in stereo since we do have stereo width from the unison. I'm going to zero out some of these parameters here. Um, and let me put this on zero. And so with this, I want things to be pretty rhythmical. Um, so we have this like whole sample and hold section here. It's being fed by a triangle wave and then it's being sampled and held at a rate of the step frequency. Um, for that uh, step frequency LFO, you can think of it, I'm going to use the common LFO. Um, you can think of this as like on an MS-20, this would be the, uh, the, the pulse that would be uh, grabbing whatever is being fed into the sample and hold unit. Um, I'm going to put the sync reset, that is the phase start. Uh, I'm going to have that reset by a note on command. I'll put the tempo sync on 16th notes, 16 just regular 16th notes, not 16th notes times four, which would be a what uh, quarter note. Um, I will also tempo sync the triangle waveform. I'll put that at a whole note, sure. So uh, let's start fashioning the other parts of this. Uh, remember delay time. Uh, with dry at 50-50, we are creating a copy of the input, uh, and then we are summing it with itself at uh, af after it goes through a delay, after it's delayed by a certain amount of time. So as I turn this up, we're effectively creating like a comb filter, and that is going to manifest as peaks and troughs um, with e uh, even and odd harmonics that are tuned by the uh, by this value. Uh, let's see if you can hear that there. So I'm going to go with like eight. You can. This is more easily thought of as like. Uh, like if it's if the flange is gonna like which position the flange is gonna be in is it gonna end up um, sweeping in like a higher range versus a lower range? Um, I'm also gonna give it some feedback. Uh, this parameter would probably be more apparent if I'm sweeping this, starting to sound more like a regular flange. Uh, with depth, that's where this is gonna come in. This is this uh, sample and hold that we are, is gonna output into. And modulate the delay time. This again acts like a unipolar modulation source, so we will only be turning up the delay time. 
Let me uh, turn up depth, and then you'll hear what sounds almost like a like a sample and hold circuit. Actually, it'll sound more like a sample and hold circuit if I use uh, noise as the uh, waveform that's being sampled and held. <laughs> So you can hear how it almost sounds like an arpeggiation, except the notes are being chosen randomly. Um, if I have this on a triangle, uh, remember we're, we have a, a triangle cycling at a, at a whole note now that's being, uh, who, who, uh, of which its voltage is being sampled at intervals of 16th notes. And so, in other words, the arpeggiation that results will end up being regular. It will hit the same notes I say that in quotes each time. So let's listen to what that would sound like. Da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. Um, and you'll notice there's like a little blip in the beginning. It goes like da dun da dun, and that's because this um, the sampling LFO uh, is starting off and I like a weird phase. If I just phase flip it, it ends up uh, smoothing out. Um, something else I want to do is I want to offset the phase of this modulation source between the left and right channel. Um, and at 90, it ends up almost creating like, like, a, like a ping pong effect. Uh, in fact, let's go from zero to 90 and you'll hear how it creates width as well as creates that like ping pong effect I'm talking about. And so we know that if we go from like, 50-50 uh, dry wet to zero, we take away all of that modulation. Um, so I'm going to modulate that with VJS minus X. We'll put it at 50. So now we'll go from dry to 50-50 dry wet um, at a rate of a, what is that, a 64th note. So like super fast in the beginning, and then we'll drop down to like um, 25 percent right um, at a rate of a whole note back up so on and so forth and uh, let's hear what that sounds like Maybe a bit of high dampening. Pretty interesting. I'm like barely hearing the uh, the high dampening control. It would be a lot more obvious if I give it like a ton of feedback. Uh, for instance, if I give it like full feedback, we'll just create like an arpeggiation. Might be kind of loud, but let's try it out. Now, if I give this, how much more muted that sounds. So this sound is uh is done. Let's throw some chords into it and see what it see what it sounds like. Again, the goal here was to create like a brassy sounding pad and let's see if we achieve that. <laughs> 